हेलो हेलो वर्णी सर हेलो वर्णी सर Okay, uh, so so let's start our meeting. So I formally uh, welcome Professor Naim, uh, as well as all the participants. Uh, sorry for the interruption or sorry for the delay from our side due to the technical glitch at the last moment. However, we'll ensure that from tomorrow onwards it will not happen. And uh, as far as this workshop is concerned, uh, we have around uh, 900 participants registered from various countries, uh, from around approximately nine countries and around 18 states. Out of which, more than 100 are from uh, uh, the abroad, and the remaining 800 are from the India. Uh, so this is a five days uh, session, uh, five days uh, faculty development program. and uh, slowly we will start with the fundamental topics and uh, which is very much essential for to, uh, for this workshop and from then slowly we will move move on to the uh, advanced topics uh, so now uh, i request uh, uh, professor uh, uh, rajesh kumar patnaik and uh, professor mishra to take it forward thank you Uh, uh, Rajesh Kumar Patnaik and uh, Professor Mishra to take it forward. Good afternoon, all the participants. Uh, first of all, uh, 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 Professor Dr. P. Barni uh, Barni Chandra, the HOD and convener of this program, uh, Dr. Naim, who is the resource person for today's program, and uh, Dr. Uh, Rajesh Kumar Patnaik. Dr. Sthita Prabhu, Mr. Sthita, the coordinator of the program, and all the faculty, all the participants. Uh, first of all, uh, 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 Dr. Dr. Prabhu, Bar. Is it audible now? Yes, sir. Audible. You can start. Uh, good afternoon to all, uh, dear participants. Uh, I regret uh, for the delay today due to some technical uh, disturbance. Uh, I I invite uh, uh, Professor Professor Dr. P K P Barney Chandra, convener and HOD of the Tripoli Department, and uh, Dr. Naim from uh, Malaysia. Uh, who is the resource person for today's session dr sthita prakash misra who is the coordinator of this program i and all the participants faculties research scholars industry person uh, who have uh, registered for this program i welcome you all for this uh, international fdp five day international online fdp on 
recent strategies on smart uh, and micro and smart grid technologies 2020 uh, which we will conduct for uh, five days and uh, though micro grid and uh, uh, smart grid are uh, today's day's topics and uh, more and more uh, information should be shared in this region so i think this fdp uh, in this pandemic time uh, so many resource persons are coming and uh, maybe from india and abroad also resource persons are coming and uh, i think this will uh, be an informative and as well as interactive uh, fdp for all uh, i request uh, that we are going to start the session now and uh, after the session is over please uh, register your or submit your feedback or quiz and that will be the attendance for the day uh, now i request uh, dr sridhapakya misra the coordinator of this program to formally introduce the resource person and hand out the session to you thank you thank you very much Thanks a lot, Dr. Patnaik, sir. So, first of all, I am thanking Varnichandra, sir, who is the convener of this program. And due to him, this is a grand success that out of the uh, world, totally around 900 participants are there. And uh, 800 participants are there from country, from various states, and 100 participants are there. And we are thankful to Professor Naim, who is working as an associate professor in University of Technology, Mara, Malaysia. So, formally, I am starting with a basic introduction of Professor Naim. Professor Naim has worked four years in thermal power plant in Kuwait, where he was involved in the maintenance of eight units of each 300 megawatt generator, overhauling, troubleshooting, and setting up daily monthly maintenance schedule for the motors as well as transformers. In Malaysia, Dr. Naim worked two years as a site engineer and participated in various projects of designing and commissioning of 132 by 11 KB substations. Now he is working as an associate professor. So he has performed numerous consultation and technical training for several power industry to both local such as Dubai and London. Apart from this, Dr. Naim has represented UITM as an invited keynote speaker to several countries like US, Japan, and India. Currently, he is attached to faculty engineering in electrical department in University of Technology, Mara. His expertise includes power generation, stability, protection, electrical machine, AI control of power system, and UPFC. Currently, he is a technical consultant to the government and private sector, including the Hydro Sarwak, PhD, and TNB generation. He has published several technical papers for international journals and conferences. Apart from this, he is a reviewer of several Tier 1 and Tier 2 international journals. Dr. Naim has already completed two university grants, and now he is going undergoing with so many government grants. Thanking you. Now. I am welcoming Professor Naim to start the session. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your invitation. I uh, I appreciate this uh, this program. I congratulate you in advance for this successful uh, program, and. Um, I thank you, uh, Professor Mishra, for the presentation, uh, introducing myself. I consider myself lucky to be with this uh, uh, group of eminent professors, researchers, students, uh, postgraduate and undergraduate students who are joining us now. I thank you uh, for this invitation again. Um, so my topic will, will be related to power system but uh, exactly it's not much to the uh, the renewable energy, rather the power system re related to the power system at large. However, I have done few research on fuel cell and um, I'll be very happy to, to, to share my knowledge with you in, the, in, the, in your upcoming programs. Um, so I'll be sharing with you. Um, my slides, I hope this is readable and I hope it's a visual for you all. Yes, sir, it is visible. You can finish it, sir. 
Thank you. So uh, it's a uh, it's um, this topic today is more to uh, the power system stability, uh, whether it is a smart grid, macro grid, whether it is uh, the the grid of the uh, national transmission line. Sir, in uh, YouTube live, uh, the presentation is not visible, sir. Um, Sorry for the interruption. So now, now it is visible, sir. We can continue. Okay. Thank you. Maybe it's the time delay for that. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Um, so to start with uh, in a power system, and um, I'll try to make it as as possible as I could related to your industry, so that all the postgraduate, undergraduate students, uh, engineers could uh, benefit from this. Uh, the objectives of this deliberation. Um, the, as we all know that the power system is very, very large, a great scale of interconnected transmission lines with the synchronous generators connecting those to the uh, sub-transmission and further it is subdivided into uh, distribution, whether it is uh, residential, uh, commercial or industrial loads. This involves uh, a few thousand of uh, kilometers of uh, transmission lines, um, many, many generating units, uh, let alone the big power plants, various many power plants uh, that spread all over the network. And um, to understand the difficulty, the complexity of the power system, at each power step power plant, at each single unit of generator, at each single line in their transmission and distribution, there are so many devices uh, monitoring, controlling, and also signaling the actual data of the transmitted power, voltage and current, of course. So this uh, tremendous amount of uh, devices and instruments, auxiliaries, that uh, contribute to the complexity and the uh, difficulty of uh, understanding the, the overall power system. Uh, what I'm trying to empathize here is that reliability of a power system is really uh, not achievable. Uh, however, to really uh, uh, understand the concept of a power system at large. Uh, let's divide the, the diagram that you can see right in front of you here, the electrical side and the mechanical side. Mechanical side, as you all know, the, the power input to the prime mover, whether it is a steam, whether it is uh, water, whether it is any type of energy that actually run the prime mover and the other side of the electrical line is the generator and its uh, auxiliaries and the, the and its accessories of transformer, transmission line, substation, and so on. The the power system stability simply uh, state that the mechanical input, therefore the steam of the prime mover, for example, and the electrical output should be equal. So the power P mechanical and P electrical are equal. And, and that's what you call it stability. And that's what you call the system is stable, simply because the, the, the deviation or the difference between them is zero, as you see. Now, let's imagine the extreme line, the extreme department of the system, which is load, assume the load has increased or decreased uh, suddenly and in that in that aspect the electrical output will be much more than mechanical input and and therefore the system might not be not, might be stable and it might oscillate uh, this oscillation is maybe uh, die out in a very very short period of time but if it does not so, then we will say that the system is unstable. So 
in, in order to achieve stability, we need, uh, we need devices, we need equipment, we need uh, something that actually brings back this, the operating point to the original, which is nothing but an electrical point of view. It's a 50 hertz frequency. It is 3,000 3, RPM synchronous speed or whatever is the synchronous speed is. Now, to, to appreciate the importance and the complexity of the power system in, let's say, let's move to the, to the generating point of view. So what we do have here is that the input mechanical, which is nothing but the fuel or the steam, as you can see here. So this steam is responsible to run the turbine. The turbine is therefore it running, it runs the generator which has the same uh, shaft coupled together. And at the end of the day, what we get, we get a very interesting, very nice voltage current in the same 50, 50 hertz. Uh, 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 and that's what you really wish for. However, the 50 hertz or the uh, nominal voltage that you get at the, at the output of generator and therefore at the output of your uh, the input of your loads may not be the same uh, and due to many, many reasons here. So what is the objective here is that at all, if the load increase suddenly or decrease suddenly, for example, uh, there is a, a sudden uh, connection of load during the daytime, simply because uh, business is open, uh, uh, loads has increased. So Therefore, the electrical input will be much higher than mechanic mechanical output. And, uh, and that's uh, what we see here. The system may experience some uh, oscillation, experience some uh, instability behavior. So what is the objective here is to bring back or to die out those oscillations produced by the, by the instability. Now, so these are the, the phrases, the, the, the one you see here, what is the system stability? And it, is, it has three different or four different pillars. The, uh, what we're really looking for is that the first pillar, the first behavior, which is a system uh, stable uh, or the system steady state stability. And but actually, and reality, you may not get this all the, all the time. And instead, you may get uh, the transient stability in which that there might be major disturbances. Uh, for example, the lightning stroke, for example, sudden change of, uh, of, of line, sudden loss of feeder, sudden, uh, uh, sudden uh, this uh, loss of, of equipment like uh, load and so on. So that's what you call it major disturbances. And in fact, it's, it's not uncommon. And well, engineers need to face this difficulty, needs to face to the, the problem of uh, disturb, the major disturbances that you can see here. Because if you talk about small disturbances, uh, just like what I say, gradual change of load. This is uh, within state steady, steady state stability. And the inherited characteristics of the power system, it's the controllers that you can, you can see in the prime mover and in a, a LFC, uh, load frequency control, and in the AVR, uh, automatic voltage regulator, the inherited characteristics of those controls will actually take care of those small disturbances. So there is no issue for us to really uh, focus on, on this steady state stability. There is no fun, there is no challenge. Now, the biggest challenge here is that when you have a major disturbances, uh, so what, what suppose we do? What are the equipment supposed to counter back this uh, oscillation or these disturbances? And what are the effects, in fact, the, those major disturbances, if those still persist in the line, what happens 
to the uh, performance of the load equipment, what happened to the parameters in the line, and so on. The, sec the third and the fourth also contribute to the transient stability very much uh, interrelated, namely the dynamic stability and the voltage stability. However, uh, as per IEEE uh, uh, definition of power system with stability, it has uh, three big classifications, uh, rotor stability, frequency, and voltage stability. So each one will be uh, is subdivided into uh, uh, various uh, small classifications. So uh, what we really are looking for is a transient stability uh, at large, which is uh, very, very important. So uh, a while ago, I mentioned that uh, to really achieve stability, the input power, or if you like, if you like to represent it by mechanical torque, is the same really. Torque the, multiplied by omega is a power, so it's the same really. So the power mechanical and the power electrical are same. Uh, therefore, the difference will be zero. However, if they are not zero, if they're equal to PA or equal to TA, that definitely engineers will, will definitely conclude there is a small or big disturbance. So, uh, well, this stability and the complicity of the stability will be appreciated if uh, one mentioned that the, the modeling of the system itself require two types of equation. One is a a set of nonlinear differential equations represented by swing equations, and the other one is a set of algebraic equations. To solve those for simplicity, for modeling, we require numerical methods. Hence, there is no such thing we have a formal solution to the stability issue. And the, as you all know, numerical uh, techniques involve uh, high, uh, to, uh, a very long time to, for, for the iteration to, to converge into uh, a formal or uh, semi-formal uh, solution. Therefore, uh, to make it uh, easy and not to make things life difficult, I just represent the differential equation or the same equation, as you can see from the slide, represented by uh, uh, the string equation, as you can see here, and to actually decide on the system whether it's stable or not, we need to have a graphical uh, or a visual or conceptual uh, 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 representation of that. And what I'm trying to say, we need further. We need a graphical or conceptual or visual uh, representation, which is uh, nothing but the EAC, as you all know. Th that will tell you whether the system is 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 will come to to, to stability under steady state uh, pillar, or it might oscillate further to uh, represent the transient disturbance, or it might be uh goes beyond beyond stability and that's what nobody wishes to have so in order to represent that graphically uh and not to put a mathematical uh, a very high high uh, uh complicated equations uh, into that uh, i i i personally disagree with um, complicated mathematical equations and modeling to understand the concept and to actually uh, appreciate the simplicity of the system, even though it is a very complex uh, network. So what I just bring uh, here is that the equal area criterion will simply uh, show the, the, the system is green or red, green zone or red zone, you know, whether it is stable or not stable. So uh, no need to uh, explain that in detail, except that the operating point right here, right here, which says that this is the PM, uh, that point represent, which is number five, 
is to represent the equilibrium. That means the mechanical uh, input and electrical output are equal. Therefore, that is really great. But what happens if there is a disturbance, whether it is a, 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 a very simple or complicated disturbance, this operating point, which is a 50 hertz, if you like, which is the rotor angle of the electrical machine, may not, will move upward or downward, downward represent on the load status. And therefore, it will oscillate about this point and it will settle to a new equilibrium point, a new operating point, which, uh, in which the, the, the two uh, zones or the two uh, areas, as you can see from here, the green and yellow, if you like, if they are equal, that, that operating point or that new operating point is the new stability or the new zone of stability. So, based on that, you'll understand that the equilibrium point might work somewhere in this in this area. But what happens if your operating point at all operates at the maximum of the curve? That is a very, very dangerous because a simple fluctuation of load that definitely will show a, a complete unstable system and complete shutdown and blackout of your electrical power. And that's, that's a big, big problem. Now, so this second slide represents what happens if there is a disturbance or maybe fault or maybe sudden change or loss of feeder. So it will be cleared out, provided that both areas are equal. Uh, and that is an indication. And that's an indication that the, the new operating point is actually uh, is working. So what happens, somebody says, what happens if, that, if this operating point oscillates and the two, uh, the two uh, areas may not be equal? Uh, then, then you will they will experience a rotor angle oscillation, and and that invites a big big issue related to the uh, uh, auto synchronism uh, damping out, and of course at the end you get some uh, this uh, uh, shutdown or this blackout. So why this happens? Must somebody ask me why this? Why, what, are, well, load fluctuation is this simple. It's the inherited characteristics of the controller, which is in the AVR, automatic voltage regulator, uh, LFC, load frequency control, will definitely absorb this oscillation. So what's going on? Why the stability has to be, uh, again, rise? Well, you have to talk about uh, high disturbances. Why this happen? Why, why not? Why not? We just make it as as or uh, consider it as a small small uh, disturbance. Now, we'll, we'll keep deliberating about this. But at the end of the day, the, the the last the last answer I'm gonna give is that because of the uh, regulator or because of the VAR or voltage and reactive, it's because of the reactive power that that causes havoc to your system. It's not because of the voltage. It's not because of the power that, that loads are consuming. It's not because of the high current in the line that therefore there is I square R. It's not because of the, uh, the transmission line loading or loadability or capability comes to the 90% of it. It's because of the VAR content that, that flow into the line from the generation to this distribution, and it will it will be absorbed into the load. So that is the last that is the last thing. There is voltage ampere reactive. That is the one which we it causes stability. It causes a problem of uh, economic issues. It causes a uh, uh, protection issues, protection problem. It causes the uh, the uh, many other issues related to the control and, and, and so on. Okay, so it's because of that, we are having the, the, this, uh, the problems of, of operation 
and control in the in the uh, in the power system, uh, which is a very very complex. So, to summarize the to summarize the control strategies that we have, we can perform either uh, a power flow uh, th that that's very very important, or to perform short circuit studies to understand the importance of stability, or to perform the economic uh, load dispatch, or to to, to have this application of equal area criteria in our transient stability, or maybe have contingency and, and so many other problems, uh, so many other strategies, which is uh, actually can be also um, include reactive power management, uh, voltage stability studies, and so on and so forth, as you can see from here. So this is a, 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 an example of the power system that you have, right from generation uh, through the transmission lines to the distribution. This is a 37 bus bar, but of course in, uh, in our countries that we have more than hundreds of bus bars, that increase the complexity. Therefore, it's, uh, the control strategies uh, will, be, will be more complicated than what we are having now. Uh, for, so, and 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 how to to perform stability uh, remedies into these uh, problems? We simply we simply we have uh, a control that is the control system uh, control uh, rooms that you have in whether it is in voltage uh, in the power plants or substations or even in the uh, substation. Uh, uh, control rooms as well in in this control uh, we perform all these strategies we perform all these uh, important strategies to actually achieve stability uh, all right let me skip the this two two or three slides for the sake of uh, uh, to achieve the within the time frame that I'm allowed to uh, this will summarize what is going on at the generation, and then I will take you to the to the distribution side. So, as everybody knows, this is the turbine or turbine that really runs the generator. This is the generator that produces the voltage and the power, and it will be further transmitted to the transmission line, and it will be uh, uh, sent to the uh, customers, whether it is again, it is commercial, residential, or, or maybe industrial customers, clients. Now, to, to understand and to perform a control strategy and to perform uh, a remedy of, of uh, stability issues, issues here in the system, uh, LFC or simply frequency control or frequency sensor. That will measure the, the 50 hertz that you have in the transmission line, uh, a 24 hour monitoring system. And if this frequency uh, increases or decreases, and this is happened because of sudden change of load, so the 50 hertz, it might increase suddenly. So what happened? Uh, the, uh, the speed has increased. And in a very, very simple way, I would say, electrical power has increased. So this electrical power increased. The, the, the mechanical power is constant, as you see the, here, because of the steam input will cannot be changed immediately. There's a great amount of energy into the turbine. So this mechanical input is the same. So if you remember, if you recall, P mechanical, is the same, the electrical output is increased because the load has increased, and therefore, there is um, something like J inertia, as you all see here, there's acceleration, and if there is acceleration, the frequency will increase to, that's what I can see here, the frequency increases beyond the blue line, which is a 50 hertz frequency, okay? So this frequency might be at this point or the further up, this the higher point. 
Uh, and that's what you, you, we really do not wish to have. Uh, why? Because the operating point, originally it was the blue line, the blue point, but now the frequency increased 50.5, if you like, or 50.9 hertz. And this operating point has to be shifted upward so that we, we achieve equilibrium. That means the mechanical input will be equal as mechanical or the, the electrical output. Then, as you can see from, as you can observe from the arrow here, the power output has to be shifted upwards, therefore, to, to, to achieve equilibrium. So, what we do here is that this frequency sensor will, see this, will, will definitely send a signal to the, uh, the controller that your 50 hertz is not the same as you wish. And uh, the, requ the reference will be 50 hertz, but the actual is more than that. So this will be transferred into different uh, uh, strategy or different, uh, how to say, different parameter that is called delta P. So delta P will be, the, 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 that is the control part to open up the steam or to close the steam for further increased power or decreased power, uh, output, uh, mechanical power, until both are equal. So frequency represents the speed and the frequency of the system. However, what problems do we have at the moment is the bar, uh, the reactive power that flow in the system all the time, which is the which is let's say 100 megavar. So this 100 megavar will be increased or decreased depends on the uh, system load. If the load increases, the your var, your var uh, or your reactive power has increased, and the the system voltage or the bus bar voltage has decreased, of course. So that invites the voltage sensor that you can see right here to actually operate, that will tell your, your generator voltage, your generator reactive power, uh, generator reactive control to increase your voltage from the excitation system. So to make it simple, we have two problems right at the load. What we have is that the load frequency and the load, uh, uh, lo the load, uh, frequency and, and speed might increase. So if it does so, the frequency sensor and therefore LFC will take care of the frequency increment. But what most people do notice is that the, the voltage at the bus bar or the voltage right at the load will increase to or decrease based on reactive absorption, absorption from, the, from the load. So if your load has increased or if the load uh, absorb higher reactive power, your system voltage will decrease or simply will sag. So if the voltage sag, then what we have here right at the generation po uh, point of view, the voltage will increase by boosting the excitation system. So the excitation system will, in will introduce here is to uh, introduce to, to, to increase the voltage of the generator terminal and to, to uh, therefore to increase or to supply the necessary voltage right from the transmission line at the bus bulb. Now, introduction of the excitation system to increase the voltage has the VAR increased, had the voltage decrease sag has a big problem on the system stability. Why is it so? Because high speed, high frequency, and uh, high high response excitation system will invite higher oscillation. And high oscillation, we need a stabilizer to come up uh, a stabilizer that actually 
die the oscillation or, or die out the oscillation because of the uh, uh, the uh, excitation uh, increase or because of the introduction of the high speed uh, excitation, excitation system. And this, whether it is a small signal or large signal, uh, large signal analysis of the system, the excitation will actually uh, introduce oscillation. As you can see from this signal, okay, there is a step response on the voltage. Let's uh, analyze it further here. The, the, the introduction of the uh, introduction of the stabilizer because of the excitation of the system uh, increased or decreased will definitely uh, invite higher oscillation. Now let's look at this diagram that that increase that actually explains the overall performance. Had there is excitation and you introduce a stabilizer. A stabilizer is a very good for stability point of view. It will die out the oscillation. But earlier before, without stabilization, as you can see from the blue curve or the blue oscillation, you can see the oscillation uh, represent higher shoot up, higher shoot right at the generation terminal. And this oscillation will die out much later. It will take eight seconds by right. It will take should take much less than one second to to uh, to, to uh, die out. So, what do we have at at uh, without stabilizer and uh, without the PSS? The oscillation is so great that this system might lose synchronism if you really do not increase or do not introduce your PSS or simply stabilizer. So. Introducing the stabilizer with different gains, it has different or various performances better than the one with the blue line. So that system stability can be improved by introducing the, the PSS. But if you look at the system, if, even if you have AVR, LFC, and other monitoring uh, auxiliaries, even that, but you didn't have the PSS, look at the system stability, it will, look, it will lose synchronism as you can see from the dotted line, the red dotted line. But if you do have the PSS, that, that, that is a, a better performer, a better controller, uh, that, that will definitely enhance the stability. So this few slides describe What's the problem in the system? The problem in the system that is the non-linearity of the equipments that we have. Non-linearity of the equipments because we have so many converters, rectifiers, simply because of the introduction of the solid state devices in the in the in the in the, in the, in the uh, our loads. Look at your UPSS. Look at your uh, uh, the the uh, the saving devices that you introduce in your uh, uh, loads and many other things. Those will absorb very, very high reactive power. So what happened if you introduce, uh, what happened if you absorb, consume high reactive power? You are introducing the so-called voltage tag. And voltage tag means your system voltage will not be constant. What happens if your voltage is not constant? Well, the, the, your, your uh, equipments, your load equipments, devices will not perform well. Now, this is number one, which will uh, increase the I square R. This is number two. It will uh, deteriorate your power factor. This is number three. And the most importantly, the system stability will, will come at stake. So it definitely will, will have a problem at, at stability uh, issue here. We will have a stability issue. So thanks to those equipments that you have to, the, to, the, uh, to, the, to, your, to your load uh, premises, uh, the, system, the problem is they have, we have VAR. Please remember, VAR 
has a profile has a uh, will, will will has a bad uh, uh, voltage profile and it has a profound uh, uh, a profound uh, re, uh, problems in in a voltage uh, in, in stabilizing the voltage please remember one more important thing that most of you do not know if you have very high if your system uh, or load equipment absorb very high voltage uh, voltage ampere reactor there is nothing related it has nothing to do with the power consumption with a megawatt you are you are uh, consuming very high few hundred kilowatts at your system load well it's good there is no problem with the var and voltage stability there is no problem at all but if you increase your var uh, not knowingly that you are increasing because of the characteristics of the load the voltage uh, the bus bar voltage the system load the nominal voltage will definitely decrease will will sag and if this is happen then you have a big problem with the uh, the voltage stability and the problem with the power factor as well the power factor will not be as 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 the 0.9 as you all know so this slide explain who responsible of absorbing or maybe generating var okay so the transformers the cables uh, loads we the loads we absorb the uh, uh, reactive power so however the, the reactive power is there you, you cannot do much about it but it's it's uh, it will help us a very high reactive power is very uh, unfortunate to exist in the system but it's very very good because you can reduce reactive power you can uh, generate a uh, leading var to reduce your system var which is great it's simply because once you play around with the var you can play around with the voltage you can bring back your voltage to the nominal volt so the high var in the system it's a good thing to tell us that your voltage is sagging, but you can, therefore, you can introduce equipment to reduce that high VAR in the system, therefore, to bring back your sagging voltage, your swelling voltage, bring, bring back to you to the original. How do you do that? There are many various equipments and various devices that you can do that so this is one of the system that i introduce that i propose uh, this is called the power factor relay uh, introducing a power factor relay at your load maybe at your uh, distribution board db at your uh, uh, at your uh, bus bar at your substation uh, whichever you like this this many people do not know about this power factor relay this power factor relay will automatically with different settings c c over k ratio will definitely tune your this equipment this is a var generator let's call it a capacitor maybe most of you know capacitor var generator uh, var compensator uh, uh, I don't know what you call it. So this device, let's say this device is 50 kVR rating VAR generator. So this generator will be tuned using one, 12 or 10 step power factor relay. So this power factor relay based on the ratio of the system CT, this will tune uh, the 10, steps or 12 steps uh, device that you can see here a var compensator device by doing that 
the system var will be improved had there is a high reactive power in the system why do you have because we the consumers consume uh, too much var during daytime why because of the uh, nonlinear uh, nonlinear nonlinear uh, uh, characteristics of the de devices so to to increase to decrease or to play around with the var in the system introduce a power factor relay which gives a signal to this var generator to to increase or to inject leading var that cancel the lagging var that you have in the system uh, and that will reduce the vars and that brings your uh, var into the um, uh, maybe within the within the uh, uh, within the frame within the tolerated uh, range and uh, the most important that you are uh, healing the voltage sag in the system in other words you are improving the system stability so this is a, a technique that ha i have improved uh, in my in my uh, during my uh, days of working uh, in a substation design okay this is another way another technique of course but the same concept what is the concept if the var of the system the var of the consumers increase if you allow that your generator voltage will decrease will swell that is bad so what do you do you need to increase leading var in the system in the consumer how do you do that introducing uh, a technique which is called power factor relay simply it will monitor your system var and this system var from the CT current transformer will give a signal if the var is increased suddenly and the voltage suddenly decreased. It gives a signal, of course, it is a mechanical signal to the step uh, to the uh, var uh, of the uh, var generator to increase or decrease the steps to actually bring back the var or the generator var to uh, within that range which is as you all know 0 0.9 to 0 to 1.04 per unit therefore what i'm trying to say we cannot wait for the generator or the avr the lfc to increase the reactive power what happens if you allow that as you can see from the diagram you have too many losses in the system line in the transmission line in the within the system tra transformers uh, the substations the so many vars will be lost what happened you heat up your lines and more losses what do we do then we supply the var that i have introduced you we supply it locally to prevent the var from uh, being uh, absorbed by the line unnecessarily okay so the voltage stability issue here is that uh, uh, we really need to monitor your voltage all the time at your uh, premises at the substation at even at the power generation now the best operating point as I told you earlier, the first operating point when we talk about the swinging equation, we somewhere right within the stable operating range, maybe 70%. We didn't go for the peak. We didn't go for the knee of the PV curve, as you can see here, right? We work it out maybe 70%, 60%, 50%. That's the stable operating point. But what happens? If you don't work it out in the 30%, 40%, what happens if your PV approaches the 90 degree of the, of the, of the delta of the generator? What happens if you do that? Instability will uh, become a problem. 
and right at the knee operation here, you will have what? Voltage collapse. The voltage blackout. The voltage will be beyond 1.005, which you really do not wish for that. So the best operation for the PV is within here, the 70%, 60%. So there is increase of the load, as you can see here, there's no problem. The system will take care of it. But what happened if the voltage increase right now, right at the 90% or the 90 degree, then you cannot do much. There is a voltage collapse here, okay? So what do you do then, other than uh, introducing the, the power meter, the, the power factor meter, other than introducing your, uh, the VAR generator? So we can also introduce other equipment to actually heal your stability issue, such as an LTC of the transformer, uh, shunt reactors, uh, synchronous phase advancers or modifiers, shunt capacitors, SV, SV, uh, SVS, and other things like fax devices. I haven't put it. Okay. So this is a tap LTC. Everybody knows what is transformer. Everybody knows what is a tapping. Tapping of a transformer. Everybody knows. I know that. But nobody knows or very few know that LTC is not for the sake of simply uh, transferring, step up the voltage, step down the voltage of the, of the transformer. Uh, that is the concept, a uh, conventional concept. Everybody will know that. And I really want you to be very precise in, in, in defining what is transformer. Transformer is used not only to boost the voltage, not only to, put, to, to, to uh, service the customers or service the clients with the actual voltage you need. 200 volt, 400 volt, 3.3 kV, 11 kV, 33 kV. That's the service, the, to service transformers voltages, you need transformer with these characteristics to have LTC, whether online or offline, doesn't matter. So LTC is used to tune your voltage at the output, at the right at the bus bar. Why do you need that? Remember what we discussed earlier? The VAR, the reactive power of the load suddenly increased because you connect too many uh, nonlinear uh, devices. So if you don't do much about it, the voltage will sag, will swell. The voltage will not be, will no more be 230. It will be 200, 180, 150. And that you will never allow that to happen. So what we do, we, we, we have, we play around with the tapping of the transformer. To boost the output voltage. Okay, so this is the online or offline laptop LTC. Not many people know that. I just want you to share. I want to share with you this. Uh, look at that. The line with respect to the, for example, ground neutral. If you want, this is the full voltage. If you want to decrease the voltage. Simply switch on the number two. Now, saying that, it will take maybe 10 seconds for me to say that. Can you please switch on? You will select a switch to number two. Very easy to say that. But it's very difficult in real time to do that. It will take uh, a lot of uh, strategies, a lot of time to achieve uh, carrying out the duty of uh, selecting, uh, tapping to number two. Simply, it will take 12 strategies, as you can see from here. Okay, so to, to, to perform this operation, each, each strategy, it can be, I can model it with a interesting modeling uh, of this. 
each positioning and with the uh, suitable uh, with the uh, different uh, outlines and different uh, topologies uh, but but to to save the time i just want to go very very fast reading the uh, these strategies as you can see from here we need to perform bypassing we need to uh, open up uh, the second breaker which is called vacuum switch we need to uh, lift the arm of the selector and the bypass will be moving to number two and therefore therefore uh, the lifting the arm and the bypass uh, we open the vacuum switch or the upper cap the, the so-called second breaker uh, lifting the arm again and uh, put it at the original position so, uh, at uh, 10 a big part it's not well 10 strategies or 10 steps to do that okay however uh, there are other devices like fax devices that will perform uh, VAR, healing the VAR, that will otherwise sag the voltage if you don't uh, increase or decrease the VAR. If you didn't tune the VAR, that will have a big problem. So what is a fact? It's a flexible AC transmission system that actually give you the following uh, benefits. Especially, especially it will give you the, uh, the compensation and it will give you damping oscillation if there is some uh, uh, disturbances, whether it's disturbances are small scale or large scale. So simply, the VAX devices have this following the advantages. It will perform power transfer loadability and capability. It will perform the load transfer power. Also, it will uh, give you a higher contingency plant, which is called confining power flow in designated routes. It will also gives you, it will give you a great voltage stability and dynamic stability to the system. And it will also bring back the oscillation to minimum. That is called damping oscillation. And with the, with the aid of AVR, it will boost your voltage. That, that means it will give you better voltage regulation. And it will also give you a greater, um, a greater choice to uh, choose uh, loading from a better transmission lines closer to the loads and therefore closer, closing to their uh, uh, or limiting their thermal limits and also it will prevent the cascading uh, outages by quickly performing strategies to uh, remove the fault the outages from the healthy lines so this is a, a, a an example i just take it from the abb uh, company uh, this is an example of fax devices that are uh, employed at the substations. Uh, well, fax can be have different categories, can be series, shunt, can be uh, combined series, series, can be combined series, shunt, that is called um, uh, UP, UPFC, Unified Power Flow Controller. Well, what it does exactly, it will tune if it is a series controller, just like series capacitor on the line, it will definitely tune leading VAR. Now, now look at this. We, are, we don't talk about uh, uh, voltage. We don't talk about current. We don't talk about power. We don't talk about anything else. We are talking about VAR. So our concept, our main uh, uh, concern is that we want to inject or reject. We want to absorb or uh, increase the VARs. That is the big problem that you really have. So the big issue here is that this fellow series controller will really inject 
var in the system during the day, day time when business is open when we increase more loads when we have more nonlinear uh, non devices okay so by doing so we are we are indirectly increase the capability of the line okay and therefore your line capability will be increased so the the, the curve will not be a smaller curve but rather will be higher curve to achieve a system loadability and therefore stability had there is a disturbance and Therefore, with this compensation, with this series compensation, we can increase the, the ratio. This, they, call, they call it compensation factor ratio. And what is that called? What is it called? What is it? It is called K. It is K. So this is the, the voltage reactive that, in, that we need. And reactive power not only from generator that actually goes into your system but if you allow the fax devices like the one you now right now we inherit this reactive power will inject reactive power to the load not only from generation but also from your series compensation from this uh, from the shunt compensation from the fax devices so those further stability can be achieved if you inherit or if you inject the series compensation series compensation or shunt compensation okay so this is an example of shunt compensation and this is a very famous statcom or the so-called svs or static compensator compensator so that's what it does that's what it, what it does actually by uh, monitoring the system var and does if if the var increased then definitely the voltage decreased and and from the two converters back to back they will monitor the system voltage through the uh, this capacitor the dc capacity or the dc coupling capacitor that will definitely Tell the system voltage to increase or decrease using its uh, its internal angle. So by doing that, we monitor the system voltage. We inject more var or less var as per the system requirements. So this is an example of combined series shunt controller. Okay, and this is very very good example of this uh, 36 MVA compensator employed right at the substation in the using 100 kV input. Now, saying, by saying that we have nonlinear nonlinear uh, nonlinear uh, devices, we have a var that increased, decreased, what is the conclusion here? Your electrical energy is polluted. So electrical energy pollution will definitely invite the power quality of the of the system will be will be poor, and your performance the the system devices the load devices performance will definitely uh, will be affected. Therefore, the Power, the best power quality here is that there is no harmonics, there is no nonlinear equations, there is no var in absorption, there is no la uh, 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 var flowing in the line, which is uh, difficult, very difficult and impossible to achieve. So this is the theoretical theoretical point of view. This is just a. Uh, 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 best power quality is to have minimum harmonics as minimum as you all know five percent so that the, the voltage is constant the frequency is constant but this is absolutely impossible so what we have reality is that 
we have a problem with the voltage variation, voltage uh, swinging, voltage sagging, voltage uh, uh, oscillating, and that definitely uh, invites a problem of over voltage, right? So this is over voltage that really uh, produced because of the increase of the load. Loading has increased. So what is the, why do you have that? Because of the, some system uh, of, of load, system uh, poor regulation. Okay, the other power quality that we just highlight that for you is under voltage. That means the voltage is uh, increase, decreased. Now everybody should know why the voltage sag, why the voltage decrease is because of the VAR. That's the biggest problem we have. Why do you have VAR? Because you have more loads. Okay, so this is a have a problem with the equipment that require steady state voltage. So you, this is what you're. Well, this is the what we are trying to tell you. The so the same thing of, of course, but voltage dick sags in a very a very very small duration of time, similar to the early, earlier one, except that it occurs in a very very small period of time. Now what we have here, we have voltage swell, and also we have the the, the frequency uh, variation. Okay, so these are the, the power quality that I should highlight, knowing the problems with the, uh, the, the, the system nonlinearity that we have with problems. And of course, this slide explained the transients oscillation in the system. And therefore, that will cause flickering and cause some problems. So this is the uh, problems we have. Now, what, hap what happens if your system uh, oscillates and lose synchronism? Then this is called the so-called blackout. So from your normal system, unfortunately, the voltage regulator, the LFC could not do anything much about it. So at the end, you want to do some restoration because you have a blackout. Okay, so this I introduce you to those slides. Whether this is a smart grid, whether you're introducing a PV uh, smart grid, whether you are introducing a fuel cell or introducing a, 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 a wind farm, uh, connected it, connecting it to the uh, grid. You, uh, you have to connect it. Uh, if a PV, you have to have a converter. If you have, uh, and that is called uh, solid state devices that inherit a very uh, highly nonlinear, a highly, highly reactive VAR absorbing devices, whether you have a wind farm, and the wind farm requires very, very high reactive in injection of power. Whether you have fuel cells and other micro, micro grid system, whatever the spark grid you have, you, you need to connect it to the system, to the grid. It will never work as a standalone. And sh surely you will face problems with the oscillation. If not blackout, some system they have blackout because they lose synchronism because of the problem with the VAR. Remember this, remember the key word. So having the problem with the VAR and blackout, what do we do? What do we have to build the system uh, in English to, to have a black start restoration? Okay, so those slides might give you a good hint what to do had we have a blackout and we want to do some restoration very few people in the uh, 
who work in the power uh, power power authorities in your uh, in our countries very few and many people will not know what to do if you have sudden blackout what are the contingency what are the strategies what are the plans you should supposed to do are you just waiting for your sake breaker to all have auto closer to trip or you should have a profound knowledge to uh, simply uh, give you a, a greater uh, conceptual uh, the conceptual uh, uh, thing that they truly really understand what to do immediately not only rely on equipment okay so very just give me a quick uh, walk out walk you to the slides so this is the concept of blackout and black start you re, re, re energize the equipment okay so I, I let me just go direct to the strategies i just go uh, i will just skip those slides yes so that gives you a better understand of what's happening now once you have a blackout to well, once you have problem with stability and it's lose lose synchronism so what you really need to do is that you go to your power plant and you really need to energize a few equipments right at the excitation right from the excitation system to actually work with eye landing eye landing uh, point of view okay so this this slide explain what happened first of all you need to power you need to energize a few a few equipments to do the startup and those equipments, I can name it to you. There are ten equipments based my based my, my experience on in a power plants. This includes some pumps, turbine plant pumps like a like a lubricant uh, like oil oil turbine uh, lubricant pumps uh, and uh, other few. Uh, you need to uh, uh, start your uh, circuit breaker AB AB circuit breaker if you are using air blast circuit breaker. You need to uh energize the compressor of the of the of the pump you need to uh, actually uh do some uh there are some cooling pumps you have to energize energize those pumps from standby generator not from the power plant generator not from your smart grid generator the one you have you need to have a standby generator, which is a very small capacity. This small capacity is enough to energize a few equipment, a few generators, a few auxiliaries, just like lubricant uh, turbine, lubricant pump, uh, oil of uh, uh, they call it uh, um, cooling pump, oil cooling pump. Also, you have to do that. You have to have the energize the compressor of the air abcb and a few others so this is the first thing to do the moment you have blackout immediately in no time you have to energize those few things and those few things will only take 0 0.3 to 1 percent of your uh, capacity of your generator let's say your generator 300 megawatts so those if you try to start up your generator at all not from the standby so it will take only 100 kilowatt 200 kilowatt 300 kilowatt from this from the same generator that is tripped this is used to energize those pumps okay once you have that then you really need to do the so-called uh, start or back up startering the, uh, uh, the so-called uh, 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 start up so this is called start up uh, operation 
So what to do? We immediately energize our generator. And then what we here we do, we have to do eye landing based on uh, predefined locations. We do eye landing, we do energizing the, the lines and the nearby loads. But very, very interesting to see that the good, the capacitors that used to energize those capacitors, those SVS, those fax devices, those, the very good guys that are used to uh, give you a very good stable behavior, stable operation. All these good devices, all those good guys, you have to remove them from the, from the islanding network. All the bad guys, the nonlinear devices, the very high reactors in the system, all those bad, bad guys that you have, please put them into service. Very strange to say that. Please put them into service. Please avoid long lines. Remove them. Just try, try to locate the short transmission lines with the short, with the very small, uh, high reactive lines, high reactive loads that you have. Please include them in that into your system. Okay. Otherwise, for a very good, strong reason. Okay, uh, so that you wouldn't allow, once you are trying to supply the voltage, supply power from generator to the system load, you don't like to have the reverse voltage back to your generator. Okay, and to prevent reversal of power. Uh, so so in, a, in a way that we have to do those, this is very important strategy. And we switch on the power to this small selected uh, loads, and then we do this uh, integrating this small island with the neighboring island, and keep reintegrating and keep monitoring the system voltage. I beg your pardon. Keep monitoring the system frequency and the speed of the. Uh, running generators and at the end once you have a full full integration then you will have a complete integration of the uh, system and then then we will be will be said that we'll be saying that we're achieving a frequent a very good restoration a very good uh, system stabilization uh, right after a blackout, uh, right after severe disturbance that causes a blackout in the system. So these are the key issues, uh, key problems for system restoration. And above all, while doing this uh, building, integrating, and communicating with the other personnel to do this uh, uh, complicated uh, integrating of the system. This is not a one-man show. You have to keep communicating with the, the monitoring personnel, people, engineers at the, at the other side of the uh, control to uh, achieve stabilization and achieve uh, integrating of the system. So that's uh, a collective effort from, from the system engineers, uh, system personnel. Uh, okay, I would come, I would like to uh, uh, come to the end of this uh, presentation. Uh, the summary of, uh, the summary of this uh, of overall discussion is that uh, we as engineers and as academics we uh, academician we we have to address the problem of stability uh, because the system is getting larger and larger and getting more complicated and we are uh, 
we are not only increasing our loads, but also we are connecting more uh, generations from the, well, the smart grid uh, power plants, whether it is uh, from the from wind farm, from the PV. So uh, as the days go by, we are increasing the complexity, not knowing that by just simply introducing the smart grid, we are actually increasing, please, let's remember, increasing the VAR system or the VAR uh, flowing into the system, into the loads. And this has a profound effect on your uh, voltage uh, that has to be uh, that has to be uh, the same all over. It cannot be fluctuate. It cannot be this. Uh, actually, the voltage has to be constant. And if you tell me that it has, it has to be, there should be tolerance 10%, 5%, I disagree. The one you learn from your books, 10% tolerance is from the generation. It's not from it's not from right at the, at, the, at, the, at the load. Your system has to be the same. If you have 230 volt, you have to have 230 volt. Tolerance is 1%, maybe, of course. You cannot say 10% is good. That means 240 volt, 200 volt is good. I disagree with that, totally disagree. Because you have the monitoring devices, you have equipment, uh, that will disallow this 10 percent 10 percent variation i agree at the generation because you connect too many loads i took too many uh, generation uh, uh, a pv generator uh, wind generator so yes 10 percent is good to so tell me 10 percent at the, at the output uh, or the input of my of my for example device like a compressor like a gen your refrigerator, for example, that is not acceptable. So uh, um, voltage should be constant, cannot fluctuate. The VAR fluctuates, yes. So we have to have a, a VAR uh, generator at the load to actually bring back your voltage decrement, your voltage, uh, what they call it, sag, your swell, I don't know what they call it, to actually make it constant. So that's the keyword. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for uh, for being a for uh, being a good listener. And I wish that that at least you grasp maybe some of the concepts that I addressed today. And I. Uh, Wish you uh, the best of luck in the next deliberations uh, in the following uh, days of this uh, program. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So now we are starting the question and answer round. So some of the persons are given some questions. The first question I have written in the chat box, sir. It is written that, sir, how the power fluctuation can be improved? Someone is asking questions, sir. Can you address it, please? Okay. Uh, uh, okay, let, me, let me see the. Uh, can you uh, let me see the reading of it or uh, the? Can you please uh, say it again? Uh, because I didn't look at the. Okay. Uh, hold on, hold on. I like to. Are you able to see this uh, chat box? Oh, no. Uh, hold on. So you can uh, end the uh, sharing, okay. end the share screen, and use it. Uh, okay, pardon. Um, meanwhile, can you please read, uh, read back to uh, the first question is, sir, power factor will be affected. Sorry, sir, one minute, one minute. Yes, power factor will be affected, yeah. One minute, sir. First question is, sir, how the power fluctuation can be improved? Okay. Um, uh, a power factor is from our old studies that uh, we all know that 
there are three three uh, important uh, devices uh, that are available in market and that improve the power factor. The first one, as you all know, the capacitors. Of course, from the old studies, we know capacitors uh, is, is a very good uh, power factor performer to improve it. Had it been uh, poor, uh, the second is a phase advancers. The third is um, asynchronous motors that uh, operate in uh, without no load. So there is no load uh, motor or no load uh, synchronous motor that also does the same job as the capacitor to inject to inject a leading var. The, 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 the basic principle of injecting leading var is to cut the heavy lagging var of the system. So by doing that, your your system angle will be uh, improved and power factor is increased. That means the angle will be reduced and therefore the power factor is increased. So basically three important equipments you can employ in the while to improve their power factor. Okay, sir. So second question is what kind of power quality or stability issues are Especially faced by microgrids. Okay, uh, so the, the the problem here is the PV. The PV. Uh, everybody knows what is PV. Everybody actually uh, talk about PV nowadays. The hot topic in nowadays uh, technology. Uh, so the the problem is the PV. The output of the PV is not compatible with the gener with the with the loads voltages. So to make it compatible, you need to have a converter. You need to invert the DC into AC. So to invert it, to, to having inverters uh, and to have those uh, solid state devices, and they are the one, the, they, are, they are players number one that not only generate harmonics, but also deteriorate the, the power quality and increase the VAR in the system, the lagging VAR in the system, unfortunately. So they are the one which uh, bring, uh, mix their power, pollute the power quality um, in, this, uh, in this network, in this microgrid network. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, can I hear you? Yes. Yeah. Can I, yes. Yeah. How to reduce the frequency disturbance in wind generation to grid system? How to? Again. Uh, How to reduce okay. the frequency disturbance in wind generation? To grid system. Okay. Um, first of all, we we really need to increase the the frequency of the wind farm. Um, uh, I personally, I never work with a wind farm uh, before. Most of my my work actually in a PV and a fuel cell. Recently, I have uh, constructed uh, in the laboratory. I have done. Uh, um, we have a fuel cell, uh, a very big experiment, hardware and software. We have done that. We work with a PV, of course. We have a very big center in a PV. But personally, I never work with a, a wind farm. So I, I will not deliberate this question, a big pardon. I won't answer this. Uh, I, uh, a great, great question, though. But uh, overall, to, to decrease the frequency uh, of the system, uh, well, not, not forget about the, 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 the wind farm. Uh, basically, we have to uh, use the excitation as our method. Okay. So the excitation will take care of the uh, will take care of the uh, from the, uh, from the LFC 
load frequency control and from the LFC will we'll, uh, bring back the frequency to the original uh, using this uh, the drop characteristics. So drop characteristics actually is the one uh, be behind bringing back the frequency to the original if it's become low. But for the wind farm, I pardon me, I, I, I will not uh, deliberate into this matter. Thank you, sir. So last question they have asked, how we will identify the location of compensating device in the distribution systems? Ah, this is great. This is a great question, really. There are 10 important locations. Actually, I had a, I had a seminar, I remember, that is in Dubai. Uh, it's about uh, the, the name of the training in Dubai. It's a five days training uh, for engineers. The name of the training is uh, the, the, the technique uh, of troubleshoot and fault locator. How to locate the fault in the system. Okay. With, in that in training, I also uh, how to fold the, how to locate the fault and how to actually in that location how to uh, introduce your uh, compensation devices. Okay, that's a great question. So basically, basically, uh, the most important uh, location here is that it should be very near to the load center. It shouldn't be from the load centers very very near to the um, to the bus bar okay so the best is right at the bus bar right at the bus bar which feeding the loads okay so that so that's the best the best location for the uh, for for the for the but there are nine important locations but that will i will i will uh, make it lengthy discussions but uh, very near to the uh, bus bars. That 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 will do really. Thanks a lot, Professor. So I am handing over the session to Professor Patnaik, sir. So who will give the vote of thanks? Patnaik, sir. But next, sir, your voice is not audible, sir. But next, sir, kindly check your voice is not audible. Is it audible? Is it audible? Yeah, it's fine now. Uh, Professor Dr. Naim from uh, UITM Malaysia. I, th I thank you very much, sir, uh, for accepting our uh, invitation and uh, giving a very good uh, session. Uh, my this session is very informative and uh, very interactive. Uh, at the at the outset, uh, I thank you very much because in a very short time you have accepted our uh, invitation and you have given a very good session today. And, uh, I also thank uh, our management uh, to organize this online FTP and where uh, participants from uh, all, all over the world have uh, come and uh, participated in this online FTP. Uh, I thank you all and uh, I hope uh, today it was a very um, problem in the first half an hour because there was a technical issue due to which we, we had a delay for half an hour. I, I, Ask you to. I, I I apologize to all of you. I apologize you names are also a delay. Now, uh, so it was a very good uh, session, and I thank everyone for their cooperation. And uh, we ensure that from tomorrow onwards, uh, all the sessions will be started in time, and uh, there will be and everything will be stipulated in time. So I I request all of you to please join in by one forty five tomorrow, and we are. Sharply going to start the sessions by 2 p.m. and we'll ensure that no no problem will, will be there from tomorrow. So now, very much, sir. Thank you, name sir. Okay, thank you very much. For, thank you, thank you, professor. Uh, 
Thank you, Professor Mishra. Mishra. Um, we really thank you and thank uh, Jimmy uh, for your invitation. I sincerely thank you again to collaborate with you and the need to this kind of research ideas, like PV, wind farm, and other related things. Okay, Professor, we are very much thankful to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We are also thankful to the participants. Now, uh, for the participants, the feedback and quiz links are open. Uh, I request all the participants to please go through the uh, PDF file shared to you. Uh, just uh, click on the feedback link, give the feedback and quiz. Uh, the link will be opened. Now it is 420. The link will be opened up to 450, half an hour. So I request all of you and your attendance will be marked based on your quiz and uh, feedback submitted. So I uh, be safe, be, be at home. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you all. We are thank ending the session. We are ending the session. Professor, kindly close the session.